Hello, this is Country Z. Practice free response question for Unit 4. We love money and banking. First thing before we get started, sometimes the College Board is going to do fictional countries on your FRQs. And don't worry about it because regardless if it's the United States or a fictional country, uh, the central bank in this country of Z is doing the same thing that the Fed would be doing. Oops, we lost the picture. So, you know, some kids have gotten this question and have said, oh my gosh, what's the central bank? I don't understand. The Federal Reserve is the United States central bank. So in our country, we call the central bank the Federal Reserve. Other countries have different names. So here we go. The uh, required reserve ratio is 10% and that the we're going to assume that the central bank sells ooh, $50 million in government securities in the open market. Just a little note, when we sell bonds, we're trying to make the money supply smaller. So that is really important information to think about. Calculate each of the following the total change in reserves in the banking system. So once again, the Fed is going to sell the bank's bonds. So instead of the banks having cash, they're now going to have a bond. So in order to have the bond, $50 million has to be removed from banks. So the change in reserves is $50 million. And some of you might be putting like, it's a decrease in 50 million or it's a loss of 50 million or it's a removal of 50 million and that is okay. But again, it's just saying change. So the change is 50 million, whether it's an increase or decrease, it's still $50 million. The maximum possible change in the money supply. Think of this as because we've removed $50 million, we've removed the multiplied effects of that 50 million if it had stayed in banks. So if that bank, if the banks had kept $50 million and it all got loaned out, it would have been multiplied by the multiplier. So 1 over 0.1 equals 10. So we would have seen a growth in the money supply of 500 million because it's 50 times 10 in the money supply. Part B Using the correctly labeled graph of the money market, show the impact of the central bank's bond sale on the nominal interest rate. When you see nominal interest rate, it should be a little flag to you that says money market graph. We already know from the beginning that we want a smaller money supply because the bank is selling 50 million. Not often do we get a free response question where we're moving the money supply to the left, but it happens. And I want you to be confident when you get a question like this, that it is possible. I feel like sometimes kids say, oh my gosh, we never move it this way. Is that actually true? Can it actually happen? And the answer is yes. So um, the money supply is gonna shift to the left. The interest rate is going to be increasing. So the interest rates increase, and actually let's throw a little nominal in there at the top as a caption. What is the impact of the central bank's bond sale on the equilibrium price level in the short run? So while we don't have to draw this particular graph, I think it's actually really important that we visualize the aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph because that's the graph that talks to us about price level. So you have to visualize in the short run, and let's just pretend it's a fully employed economy, and I actually don't even think it's that relevant to put a long run in, but why not? I love the long run. It's good to have it around. So interest rates increased. This is going to affect aggregate demand negatively because anybody who's sensitive to interest-based purchases, which are people and businesses and even the government, are going to consume less. So interest-sensitive consumption is going to decline. And this is going to 
lower the price level. So again, we didn't have to draw this graph, but I feel like in order to figure it out, you have to visualize it. The next part of the question builds on part C, so you got to get part C right to do part D correctly usually. As a result of the price level in part C, are people with fixed incomes better off, worse off, or unaffected? Explain. Well, a fixed income, let's think about what that means. A fixed income means I earn the same amount of money every single month regardless of whether or not prices fall or increase. So let's just say I'm earning, I don't know, $2,000 a week, which by the way, pretty good income. $2,000 a week, no matter what. If I all of a sudden am living in an economy where everything fell in price, my $2,000 suddenly has more purchasing power. So I'd be better off. And it's because my $2,000 has more purchasing power now that everything is less expensive. So I'm going to scroll down to the rubric like I did before with the other question. You might have to pause, but again, this is what we're looking for. 50 million, 500, money market graph, and then lastly, your explanations about the price level falling, fixed income, and an acceptable explanation for that. So if anything was fuzzy or you need to go back and look at it again, pause, go back, re-listen, re-read. Talk to you soon.